Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan. Welcome back to This Week in Japanese Baseball, a show where I discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly that happened in the world of Japanese baseball over the past week. You can listen on YouTube, Patreon, and Spotify for free. This is now episode 5. I'm recording this on Thursday, April 25th. Hard to believe the first month of the baseball season is almost complete, so let's take a quick look at the current standings in NPB. In the Central League, the reigning Japan Series champion Hanshin Tigers have finally started to get on a roll. They're in first place now at 12, 8, and 3. Then it's the Chunichi Dragons who had a hot start, but they've been scuffling. They're at 11, 9, and 2. Also, just hit their first home run in 13 games. They had not homered. For 13 games. Think about that.、Uh, the Omiuri Giants are in third at 10, 9, and 3. Then it's the Hiroshima Carp at 500. The DNA Bay Stars at 9, 11, and 1. And then the Yakult Swallows are currently in last place at 7, 12, and 1. Then in the Pacific League, the SoftBank Hawks sport the best record in MPB at the moment. They're 13, 6, and 2. Then it's the Nippon Ham Fighters at 11, 7, and 1, followed by the Oryx Buffaloes, who've been climbing up. They're 12, 10, and 1.、Uh, then you have a couple of teams under 500. It's the Lote Marines at 9, 11, and 1. They've really been scuffling over the past week.、Uh, then it's the Rockwithin Eagles at 8, 12, and 1. And then the Cebu Lions have the worst record at MPB at 7 and 14. Last thing before we start today this video is sponsored by Tone Sport. If you are in need of a high quality yet affordable baseball or softball bag, check out Tone Sport. They have a variety of colors, including dark red, iron gray, radiant pink, and royal blue, as well as different sizes for adults and youth. I don't play baseball anymore myself, but I tried out a few of the bags and I can attest to their durability and comfort as they are spacious enough to fit all your various gear and items without being too big or too bulky. So, If you or someone you know is a baseball or softball player, definitely check out Tone Sports catalog.、Uh, and with discount code YAKUCOSMO10, you can get 10% off all their products on Amazon. That's discount code YAKUCOSMO10 for 10% off. Links will be in the description below. All right, now time for the good point. And there was actually quite a bit of good that happened this week. Thought I'd maybe talk about Koki Kitayama's breakout for the Nippon Ham Fighters. He's been. One of the most dominant pitchers in Japan so far this year, coming out of nowhere. Or maybe Munitaka Murakami's recent form. He's been on an absolute heater lately after a bit of a slow start. OBP and Slug both close to 500 at this point. Pretty insane stuff.、Um, but I think there is only one thing I can pick as the good point for this week、uh, because of the sheer significance that it holds. And that's Shohei Otani surpassing Hideki Matsui's record for home runs by a Japanese born player. In Major League Baseball, Otani hit career home run number 176 against、uh, Adrian Hauser of the New York Mets this past Sunday. That broke a tie he had with Godzilla himself, Hideki Matsui, for homers in MLB. So now the unicorn, Shohei Otani, is the top dog in MLB history.、Uh, he also hit another one yesterday when I'm recording this,、uh, so that gives him 177. And Otani did this in only seven seasons, you know, which is actually closer to five and a half in terms of games played because, you know, he, there was the pandemic shortened season plus the year,、uh, this current season, it's just getting started. Whereas Mitsui did it in 1,236 games across 10 seasons. So obviously, Otani's pace is pretty wild. Um, and, and there's this real time ranking video here where you can see how quickly Otani climbs up the leaderboard starting in 2021. Because up until then, sure, he was a power hitter. He had a few insane seasons back in MPB,、uh, and he did slug 500 in his first two years in Anaheim. But until 2021, his career high in homers between MPB and MLB was only 22. Um, and granted, he is a two way player, so he wasn't hitting all the time. But then Joe Madden allows him to be fully unleashed in 2021, and that's when he goes supernova with 46 bombs.、Uh, he goes on to hit 34 the year after that, and then 44 this past season.、Um, you know, maybe if he didn't get hurt, he could have reached 176 with the Angels, but instead he finishes on 171 with them. Uh, and then he has 
uh, I guess, six so far this season with the Crosstown Dodgers. So in terms of MLB, Otani and Matsui out are at the top of the home run leaderboards. Then it's Ichiro down at 117, followed by Kenji Jojima and Tadahito Iguchi at 48 and 44, respectively. So there is a pretty steep drop-off um, after Ichiro. But Seiya Suzuki does have 37 already, so I expect him to quickly establish himself as number 4 on this list by maybe the end of this year. Um, and obviously when we talk about career home runs, it isn't really fair to just look at MLB. Uh, the previous generations did not have this same level of accessibility to even reach the majors, let alone get there at such a young age. Uh, because Matsui himself debuted at 29, and Ichiro uh, debuted at 27. So obviously, a lot of their prime was in Japan. And you look at the overall home run total, MPB plus MLB, and, and there Matsui still has Otani beat by a lot, because he hit 332 with the Omiri Giants. Um, that gives him a total of 507 between MPB and MLB. Otani only hit 48 in MPB, so he's still chilling down at uh, 225 for his career, which actually puts him right alongside Tsuyoshi Shinjo, funnily enough, with 225, um, and, and behind Ichiro still at 235. Um, but there's like 60 or 70 players above them at this point, so Otani still has a long ways to go to really cement his name among the, the inner circle of like Japanese slugging greats. The 500 home run club uh, in Sadaharu O, Katsuya Nomura, Hiromitsu Kadota, Koji Yamamoto, Kazuhiro Kiwahara, Hiromitsu Ochiai, Isao Harimoto, Sachio Kinugasa, and Hideki Matsui. Those guys are legends. Uh, and Otani is only halfway there. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's not that he needs to reach this arbitrary number of 500 to earn legendary status or anything like that. Obviously, he already has that for various other reasons, whether it's the two-way thing, won the World Baseball Classic MVP, um, you know, already has something crazy like 60 wins above replacement between MPB and MLB, and he's not even 30 years old yet. So he still has plenty of time. We know he's going to continue to defy the odds and do very special things. He's having a pretty, you know, Barry Bondsian start to his Dodgers career. Um, but, you know, it's always going to be the case that some people pull up counting stats. And at the moment, he has 225 homers, like I mentioned. Uh, he has just over 1,000 career hits, just over 100 stolen bases, uh, over 200 doubles. So he really does feel like he's at this halfway point um, where he has nine years left on the Dodgers contract. And if he's able to double these current stats in that time frame, which would require health first and foremost, but then, you know, I guess a pace of like 30 homers a year, um, 110 hits, 10 swipes, something like that, which isn't very many, that would give him close to 2,000 career hits, 500 career home runs, 400 doubles, 200 steals, and then not to mention all the pitching numbers, which, you know, he has a good shot for 100 wins and 2,000 plus strikeouts if he's able to come back strong from this second elbow surgery. Right. So, um, you know, it's not good to think too far ahead. He's not there yet. But with Otani, I do think it's totally fair to look at those types of numbers that he might be chasing for the rest of his career. Uh, and, and congratulations on him on overtaking Hideki Matsui for Homer's stateside. OK, now the bad point, And I hate that I have to do this because he is one of my favorite players to watch right now. And I expect nothing but greatness for him going forward. But Shinpei Yamashita of the Oryx Buffaloes allowed eight earned runs in four innings in his most recent start, which included two home runs, one to Kensuke Kondo and one to Hotaka Yamakawa, which was the real shot in the gut because it was a three-run homer. Um, but, you know, he allowed 12 base runners in total, eight hits and four walks. So, yeah, it, it was terrible. And granted, the balls were flying much more than usual that night. Um, it was a day where we got more home runs across MPB than any other day so far this season, which is a little bit sus given that it came right after Minetaka Murakami and a few other people in the industry spoke out about the dead balls. Uh, and then right after that, we're back to, you know, dead silence and dead balls. But regardless, there is, you know, no excuse for eight runs and four innings. And, you know, if it's one thing if it was just one bad start this year, but Yamashita has looked pretty sluggish. Um, all year. I mean, in spring training, uh, he wasn't necessarily sharp. 
and then he walked seven batters in five innings in his season debut, plus a hit by pitch, uh, which is not what you want to see. And then, you know, that was only two runs that day, so it didn't hurt him much in the stat sheet, but it was a pretty concerning way to start the year. Um, then the start after that, he went five innings, didn't allow an earned run, but he had seven hits and two walks. So, you know, I, I just felt like that command or lack thereof was eventually going to catch up to him. And then he finally had this blow up in Fukuoka against the Hawks, the best offense in MPB uh, last Friday. So in three starts to open the 2024 campaign, Yamashita has tossed 14 innings. He's allowed 17 hits, 13 walks, 10 earned runs. Uh, that's good for a 6.43 ERA and a 5.95 FIP. Uh, he has struck out 20% of batters, but his walk rate is 18%. So, you know, you look at that and you immediately realize, like, okay, this guy has no feel for the strike zone right now. Um, you know, his zone rate is also down at 42%. His call strike plus whiff rate is also very bad, only 24%. So, something is very off mechanically with him. I also noticed that his tempo is slower. He's taken about two extra seconds between pitches, which maybe doesn't seem like much, but I think it maybe shows you he's laboring out there, not really feeling comfortable, not getting in a rhythm or a groove. Um, and, you know, in a weird way, this is kind of a good thing because if you were to be playing his A game and he was still getting beat, you begin to wonder, like, oh, no, was his rookie season a fluke? Or at least you think maybe he, the level he showed then was not sustainable. But right now, he's not playing his A game. He's not even playing his B game. He is playing his F game, basically. This is Shunpei Yamashita at his absolute worst. Um, he's pretty close to bottoming out, and that's why the Buffaloes deactivated him after, after the game. Um, so, you know, they'll skip a start or two with him, let him hit the reset button, and then hopefully get back in a rhythm. But last year, you know, he debuted at 20 years old, um, he was the opening day starter for the Buffaloes because Yamamoto was busy coming coming off the WBC. Uh, same with Miyagi. And then he goes on to win Pacific League Rookie of the Year, throwing 95 innings of 1.61 ERA ball. Uh, he was untouchable. You know, he only walked more than three batters in a game on one occasion. Uh, he, ne he never gave up more than three runs in a game. So this year, he's already walked four plus batters twice, and he's already had his career worst in terms of runs allowed. So this is not the Shunpei Teyamashita we're used to. Um, and on an inning-by-inning -inning basis last year, you could have argued that he was the number two pitcher in all of MPB, behind only Roki Sasaki. Um, I think if you consider the workload, because he only made 14 starts before getting hurt, um, hurt his lumbar, his back, uh, you, you have to drop him out of the top five pitchers for 2023, but I, I still think he was firmly top 10, um, even if he fell short of the 100 inning mark, because, you know, Roki Sasaki also uh, was only in that 90 to 100 inning range. But when you're that dominant over a, over a, a small sample, uh, that still counts for something. So this version of Yamashita we're seeing in 2024 is not remotely close to what we saw in 2023. And when he's wearing number 11 and he has that big presence on the mound, he's a big dude, you know, 6'3", 220. I've stood next to him before. He is built. He almost feels a little, a little Shohei Otani-esque. Um, and he's still only 21 years old. Obviously has huge shoes to fill with Yoshinobu Yamamoto out the door. Luckily, Hiroya Miyagi is still there, has a bit more experience. He seems ready to take that true ace role. Uh, he just threw an absolute gem the other day. Miyagi's a lot more um, consistent and reliable, but Miyagi's kind of the crafty lefty, and Yamashita's the power righty. So I think they complement each other very well. And Yamashita, you know, still has some time to figure things out, I'm, and I'm confident that he will. I really am. Like, even in this completely off form he's in right now, you still see flashes of the brilliance. Like absolute carve-ups where he starts off with you know a get me over curveball sneaking in a strike then he blows 98 right past you uh and then he puts you away with a split finger in the dirt you know the, the stuff is absolutely legit he's averaging 96.5 miles per hour on the fastball so far this year regularly runs it up to 98 99 uh and he's when when he's remotely close to the plate he is still getting whiffs it's just that you know, he hasn't really been close to the plate and he's walking guys on four pitches all the time. So obviously he's not going to get many chases out of the zone when hitters can just expect a walk. They don't need to be aggressive. 
They can play passive, let him beat himself by falling behind in the count, and then when he leaves the pitch over the plate because he has to, you know, get a strike, a professional hitter can punish you, even with the dead balls. So it's only been three starts. I'm not worried for Shimpeta Yamashita. I would put him at like a three out of ten on my worryometer. I would view his bad start uh, in the same light as like a Blake Snell, you know, who has been awful in his first three outings with San Francisco, but he's coming off a of Cy Young. You know, he had a delayed spring. You expect him to figure it out eventually, and that's how I feel about Yamashita. You expect him to feel uh, figure it out eventually. He's clearly not feeling like himself right now. But there doesn't seem to be any injury. The pitches themselves look fine. I have said before that I want him to eventually add a pitch with horizontal movement that moves away from righties, like maybe a cutter or a sweeper, because he is all completely up-down right now. Um, but that being said, I still consider him to be a top 10 pitcher in MPB rest of season, uh, with the ability to flip a switch and immediately put himself in that you know top 2 or 3 conversation again with Roki Sasaki. All right, finishing off with the ugly point, and I have to remind everyone the ugly point is not inherently bad. That's what the bad point is for. The ugly point is something that is more neutral or ambiguous that's very complicated. And I'm going with Shinosuke Ogasawara's MLB rumors because John Morosi reported the other day that, quote, sources say MLB scouts are evaluating left-handed pitcher Shinosuke Ogasawara with the expectation that he could be posted after the 2024 MPB season. And there have been inklings that Ogasawara has MLB aspirations before. Uh, he was a big-time prospect uh, once upon a time, you know, won the 2015 Summer Koshien Tournament, pitched well in the U18 World Cup that year as well, uh, ended up being kind of a late first-round pick in the 2015 MPB draft. However, it took him a little while to get settled into the league uh, with the Chinichi Dragons because up until a few years ago, the image I always had of him was you know, not especially great. Uh, and that's, you know, basically what he was for the first five or six years of his career. Uh, he had some okay seasons, but most of them were not so good. And if you just go by fielding independent pitching minus with 100 being league average, lower number being better, he was almost always below average um, by like 10 to 20%, you know, like a fit minus of 110, 120, something like that. And his ERAs maybe didn't look too bad because... Nagoya Dome is a big pitcher's park, but ultimately he was like a, a consistent back of the rotation arm. And that was until 2022 when he when he really broke out at the age of 24, which is kind of funny to say. Like in MLB, obviously, if you were drafted out of high school, if they say they broke out at 24, you think, hey, that's not too bad. They slowly developed in the minors. They eventually got their shot and made their mark. But in Ogasawara's case, because he was thrown into the fire right away, uh, and, and you know I, he did spend a little bit of time on the farm, and he had some injuries that limited his his workload. But generally speaking, like he was on the top team right away since he was 18. So breaking out at 24 means he had struggled for you know quite a bit of time. But in 2022, he really put it all together. He had a 2.76 ERA, which ranked 10th among MPB qualifiers. But more importantly, he had a FIP minus of 76 and an XFIP minus of 81, both of which put him top five among qualifiers in front of big names at the time, like Keiji Takahashi or Shota Imanaga or Masahiro Tanaka. So Oga Sohara was honestly a stud that year. Uh, he had a 24% strikeout rate, which was better than the aforementioned Imanaga. And look what Imanaga is doing now in MLB. Um, the walk rate was also down at like 6.6%. So that's the first time I thought like, hey, Ogasawara is pretty legit. He had increased his velo by a couple miles per hour. He had changed his pitch mix up a little bit to utilize his off-speed weapons more often. Um, you know, he was able to increase the ground ball rate. So again, going into 2023, I sort of viewed him as not quite a premier pitcher, um, but definitely a very good pitcher. Then in the 2023 season, his, his ERA did spike up to 364 and his K percent dropped by 4%. So he wasn't able to quite replicate those great results from the season prior. Uh, but the, the advanced metrics were still fine. 95 fit minus and X fit minus respectively. So still 5% above league average. That's good. Um, and, and then if you look month by month at the splits, 
you could see a very noticeable drop off towards the end of the year. Like he didn't have a good second half at all. So honestly, you could see that as a red flag, but it could also just be like he was fatigued and wasn't pitching at his best. Cough, cough. Tatsunami made him throw 150 pitches on opening day that year. Cough, cough. But for the first two months or so of 2023, he was towards the top of the league in strikeouts. You know, he had a 30.5% strikeout rate in May last year. So that to me is a guy who does have plus stuff. Uh, like you can't fluke your way to miss that many bats, even if it's only like a four or five star sample. Uh, so going into 2024, my evaluation of Ogosawara was basically the same. You know, he was actually training in the U.S. over the offseason. There was a photo of him working out with Tyler Beatty, the former giant, Yomiuri giant also. Um, so I, I still included him in my top 50 players ranking overall. Uh, you know, he was kind of borderline. Like I went back and forth on it all offseason. But I did decide to include him because at the end of the day, he is one of the better southpaws in the league. And when he's on, he can really rack up the strikeouts. Um, and now to start his 2024 campaign, he's made four starts. He's thrown 27 in two thirds innings. He has a 2.28 ERA, 71 FIP minus, and 95 X FIP minus. So if you're looking purely at just X FIP, uh, which I tend to do if I'm being reductive, like I like X FIP since MPB doesn't have Sierra available. So you can basically say he's doing just as well as he did last year. Uh, but actually, the way he's gotten these results have been vastly different. Like, this has been a very unique stretch for him, to say the least, because he hasn't been getting any whiffs, especially in those first two starts. He hardly had any. But the results speak for themselves. He's going seven innings every night. He's keeping crooked numbers off the board. Uh, and the secret to that is that he hasn't walked a single batter yet this season. 27 and two-thirds, zero walks. Uh, and my, my man Gaijin Baseball actually looked into this and he posted that the uh, MPB season record for fewest walks um, in, in a qualified season is Takayuki Kato of the Nippon Ham Fighters from 2022. He only walked 11 guys. Um, and it was like the number three lowest walk rate in a season as well, all time. Uh, but the record before that was Jiro Noguchi in 1950 with 14. Ogasawara, however, right, is like on pace right now for single digits. Uh, and he's 15 to 20% of the way through the season. Uh, and he has zero. So if he keeps this up, he might have a chance at a very unusual record. Uh, but, you know, this is very interesting because he's not really throwing in the zone more than usual. Uh, his zone percentage is actually not all that impressive. Uh, and his first strike rate is the lowest of his career right now. So he is, you know, falling behind in the count and still works his way back to avoid a walk. Um, but he's not getting many strikeouts either. You know, his, his K rate is only 11.3% at the moment. Uh, and his previous career worst is 15.7%. So you do expect that K rate to come up. For his career, it is closer to 20%. Um, so obviously he's below career norms there, but then again, he has a 0% walk rate. So that means his K minus BB percentage is at 11.3%, which is exactly what it's at for his career. He's just doing it in a very unconventional way. And honestly, I'm not sure what to make of his start to the year. Like it could just be a small sample anom anomaly, obviously, but it could also be intentional. Like when you have the pre-tacked balls that are easier to manipulate and control for pitchers, and then the balls are so dead that they don't have any carry, uh, and you're playing at Nagoya Dome, which is notoriously hard to hit homers in, why not just be a Chad and go after hitters as much as possible, right? Like it, it's a good approach that fits his environment. At the same time, I would rather see more Ks in exchange for some more walks because that's going to make him uh, more reliable, more dominant, and less BABIP dependent from start to start. Um, regardless, though, like, you know, what is regardless of what his pitching approach is, it is quite interesting that he has MLB aspirations, uh, at least according to this Morosi report, because in the past, even just like a decade or two ago, someone like Ogasawara would rarely try their luck at MLB um, this early in their career, at least. Like, I guess Kazuhisa Ishii is the closest comp that comes to mind. But yeah, like Ogasawara, despite having 800 plus innings of mileage under his belt, is still only 26 years old. Uh, and he's flashed strikeout stuff in the past. So, you know, 
I, I can definitely believe there is some level of interest for him among MLB teams. He's, he's going to be pretty cheap. He won't be getting Yamamoto or even Imanaga money. I'll tell you that much. He's probably going to be like 10 million, honestly, or maybe a minor league deal. Um, but the reason I put this in ugly is because I really don't think that going to MLB would be a wise move for him. You know, Ogasawara, he has run the fastball up to 95 miles per hour before, but he's usually more in that 89 to 91 range. Um, and, you know, it's one thing if you're like a sinker baller or something, but he's not. He's actually very four seam heavy, throws it about 50% of the time over the past three, four seasons, likes to keep the ball down. Um, and then he has the, the slow curve and changeup, which tend to be his primary secondaries. Changeup against righties mostly, and then he does have a slider as well, which he uses against righties, um, uh, or uses against lefties, rather. Um, and, and, you know, these are solid pitches. I would say the changeup is probably his best, but even then, they're not elite put-away pitches by any means. Uh, and if I just go down the list of, like, lefties in MLB that are low 90s fastball without an, without an elite off-speed pitch... You run out of names pretty quickly, you know, like maybe Tyler Anderson, maybe Patrick Corbin. Those are the type of names you're looking at uh, at this point. And Ogasawara is is quite young. Uh, I think he has fluid mechanics. He seems like he could maybe add a few miles per hour with the right coaching. Uh, he has good command, mixes speeds. You know, I, I feel like his odds of succeeding in MLB are better than like a Naoyuki Uwasawa or a Kohei Arihara from a couple of years ago. And, you know, he hides the ball well. Maybe he has, like, solid I IVB on the fastball, like Imanaga. That's not something I can tell you based on the data that's available. Uh, but even if he did, you know, he's not like a, like a low-release point guy like Imanaga. Uh, and based on the results, I can say that the best season he had in 2022 was when he was using the fastball the least. So, you know, he actually went 44% change of curveball that year, uh, which was in line with his fastball usage and that's when he was doing his his best so i'm not really sure if ogasawara is cut out for mlb i do like him he's a funny guy based on the interviews i've seen with him uh seems like a nice dude and i consider him to be a top 20 ish pitcher in mpb right now you know he can finish the season anywhere between like 15 to, to 30 um but you know some guys are just stylistically not suited for mlb and unless you can have two to three uh, you know, a two to three mile per hour velo jump where then, you know, he could be sitting 92, 94. Now we're talking like, you know, he can hide the fastball a lot better at that point. But being 89, 91 without like a ghost fork type of put away weapon limits his potential for sure. Um, but, you know, the thing he has working in his favor is that he's quite young. Uh, I think there might be a bit more to tap into mechanically and body wise. Uh, but definitely a story to keep an eye on throughout the year. We'll see if the Chinichi Dragons do indeed post Shinosuke Ogasawara this winter. Uh, but that does it for me today. Thank you all for watching as always. Please support me on Patreon at Baseball Cosmo. Follow me on X at Yaku Cosmo. And like and subscribe on YouTube for more MPB content in English.